Welcome to the Writer Tribe Talk Show with your host, Elsa Kurt. Here's the place we talk about all things writing, publishing, and promoting your book. If you're looking for the perfect gift for the reader in your life, why not check out one of my books? They're all available on Amazon and most major online book retailers, as well as ElsaKurt.com. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Writer's Tribe Talk Show. I'm your host, Elsa Kurt. And what's the easiest? What's come the easiest? Is it the oh. story that comes easy? Is any of it coming easy? <laughs> Um, I, dialogue actually is my absolute favorite thing to write. I'm really good at dialogue. I really can get the voice in my head. Um, you know, and it's funny, I think about when it talks about writing, I always kind of default back to Ray Bradbury. Um, and there was a, a wonderful interview that he did that I show when I, when we read Fahrenheit or we do some of his short stories in my classes, there's this wonderful thing where it talks about how he went to his characters and asked them more about themselves and how crazy that might sound to somebody who's not a writer. But if you're a writer, you understand that those characters take on lives of their own. So the dialogue is very much generated by the characters, I think, sometimes because I know them well enough that I can just kind of go with what they're going to say. Um, that and sometimes they take on a life of their own and decide to do certain things. There was a a relationship that comes up in the in the book and it's uh, more in the second book but it's definitely something that was not originally anticipated so you know and it eventually will we'll do other things so the very fun make these decisions yes. sometimes they yeah. decide yes and this is it, this conversation is exactly why i love talking to fellow authors so much because when we say these things to non-writers non-authors right. they're like oh you hear voices in your head huh <laughs> oh okay honey yeah and you know and they're ready to to get the the white uh, the white coats for us right. and everything right. and when we talk to each other like oh yeah no absolutely that's that's absolutely true and it is true they they do dictate you know i there's so many books that i've written that i started off thinking okay i know who this character is i know what direction they're going in i know what they want i know their motivation i know all the things and i find out very quickly i was dead wrong and yeah. they are telling me exactly who they are and who they're not and right. you know and, and sometimes and i don't know if this happens to you after you write you know whatever it is a chapter a paragraph a, a section whatever the case may be and you you read it back and you're like i had no idea <laughs> this is where well, it was going yeah and that actually happened because we did reading parties back i don't know 20 years ago now oh my goodness it was like not even not 20 it's about 15 years and we did reading parties with a group of friends, um, which is not the same thing as working with an editor and working closely with somebody in page by page, but we did sat down and read it at a certain time. Um, and a bunch of us came together like once a week, once every other week for a period of like six months to read through the book and just, you know, go through some of the problems. And, you know, they saw what was going on with the characters that were developing a relationship. And they're like, how come you're not seeing this? You're writing the book. I'm like, I'm just, I'm just the vehicle. You know, I am just the person putting the, the words on the page. I had no clue what was going on behind the scenes. So, and they so, were laughing so at me. So relatable. Yeah, yep. so relatable. Yeah, every, every book that I've written, when I've gone back to it sometime later and, and reread it, I'm like, I have no recollection of writing this. Um, I'm uh, shocked that I that that came from me because I don't remember it. I've had people, and I don't know if this has happened to you yet, but I've had people like repeat lines from a, a book of mine back to me. And they're like, right? How funny was that when, when your character said, I'm like, I, yeah, no, hilarious. And, and inside, I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about none whatsoever it has happened it has yeah. happened not, not <laughs> recently but it has happened um one of the other books that's listed on the website which we're going to be tackling after we're done with this one because i have to actually write book three um but this other book is mostly done is the one the forever demand and uh that was done in grad school when i was going for my my uh writing and literature uh, masters and <laughs> there are parts in there that are like, wait, where did this come from? Where did this come from? I have no idea. And that's a very different book. we will be happy to talk about that at some point, but we can focus yeah. on the first one. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We can tell you, listen, you can lead this conversation wherever you want it to go with your books, because I, I know you have quite a history uh, with, with your writing. You have short stories as well. Is that correct? 
Yeah, there's short stories on there. There's a competition that unfortunately the last two years it's fallen on finals week and I've signed up to do it. It's the, the New York Midnight Writing Competition um, or NYC Midnight. And I've signed up the last two years and paid the entrance fee and it's hit finals week twice in a row. And it's been a little bit crazy with finals week and I've had absolutely no time to write. So unfortunately, I actually you know lost the lost the entrance fee obviously because I didn't, didn't uh. put a submission in. But some of the other short stories that are up there are ones that are um, from that. And one of the short stories, Tin Man, came from um, a nonfiction writing course at uh, Rivier when I was going for that master's degree, and it talks about um, losing a friend of mine. Um, he had had uh, two heart transplants. He was um, the first, or actually the second recipient of a heart transplant in Massachusetts ever. Um, very young. He was 16 years of age. His name was Matt Shalalis. And so the story goes on and talks about, you know, knowing him and uh, the experience we had knowing him and just and losing him, you know, and the unexpected loss that we had, uh, you know, after a period of time when, you know, he'd had a second heart transplant, but they only last so long, um, you know, and he was passed over for a third, you know, which it kind of makes sense um in a way because wow. other people and um you know his loss when you know just the way it happened so it's quite the it's quite the tale what a beautiful tribute to a friend that's uh that is quite a quite a story i'd like to read that um so is that where you got your start was that your first published work or did you did those come your short stories and publications and stuff like that did that come after the books or you were already published at that point um, so the book just got published in, in uh, fall of 2020. So that's the first time it came out. The other things with the contests, um, I never made it to the end of the contest, so I don't think they actually got published anywhere, but those are the ones that I actually was working on, kind of just testing the water, seeing what people thought of my writing, um, you know, doing the work for the college classes, which always doing the, the fiction and even the nonfiction was a joy because it's a good learning experience. So the book is technically the first published thing, unless you count a paper that I published with the college, but that doesn't quite count. That's in one of their journals, so a little different. I think it counts. I think the minute you get published anywhere on anything, even if it's your own blog post, I'm I'm calling it. I'm calling it a... <laughs> legitimate you get to call yourself an author right then and there. Well, that was a non-fiction <laughs> piece yeah that was a non-fiction piece on on uh popular literature like it was looking at the wizard of oz and phantom of the opera and how it was translated from the original stories into the modern day and just some of the cool stuff that goes on with that so that was a fun paper to write that's awesome. How awesome. We have we have a similar um growing up taste in in books. I am as soon as you said C.S. Lewis, you caught me. I, I clutched my heart when you I said C.S. Lewis. Saw. Yeah, so I was like, oh my God, C.S. Lewis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Slightly obsessed uh with C.S. Lewis. So that's pretty neat. Again, another reason why I love talking to fellow authors because it's mm -hmm. so exciting. And and uh, like I said to Sophia in, in our interview, I said, you know, the, the thing about doing this, these interviews and these conversations, I think it's so hugely important for uh, new and aspiring authors to see and hear this because as we well know, writing, it's it's you and your tablet or your your um, computer or your notepad, whatever you're writing on. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just you and that, and it's so isolating. You, you have no engagement with other people with it. There's nobody to really um, be inside your world with you. Right. So you're, you're really alone in there and you kind of get, or at least I did, I kind of got lost in there and I felt a, a little bit like, oh, nobody can understand, you know, nobody knows I me mean, until I started speaking to other authors. I was like, oh my God, there's so many of us, you yeah. know, we all feel the same way. Like we all live in this, this world, in this space in our head, you know, at the same time as the regular world, and uh, it was very funny to see that. So I think it's really kind of important for for new authors and aspiring authors who kind of live in this world where like have one toe in it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I hope I hope this excites them and motivates them to just jump right so. in. Right. 
Well, and one of the other conversations has been going on in one of the fantasy groups that I'm on, and it's hysterically funny. Somebody was talking about how they got jumped by their muse and kind of dragged off kicking and screaming. And did anybody understand that? I said, oh, my God, yeah. Um, Sophia was so mad. We had finished the first book and we were starting to work on the, the Ivory Queen and starting to do the edits for that. And last January, at the end of Christmas vacation, we were just getting ready to go back to school. I had a I had a dream that just stayed with me and it just it became an entire new novel um, that she was very angry because I spent two and a half months just I couldn't I taught and I graded and I wrote and that was really because I was teaching from home last year because the vaccines weren't out yet so I'd been given a dispensation a lot of the kids were out too so I was one of the home teachers so I taught from home last year and when I you know for that month and a half or two two and a half months all I did was write this piece it's an urban fantasy about shapeshifters um, it was kind of loosely tied originally to another piece that I haven't finished but now I'm going to be working to finish now that I know how to end it um, and that'll tie directly into the second one. So uh, it's called Wolves Running and it just it's it just took off. And I don't know what happened, but I, I started researching Colorado because that's where the story is set. And I've never been there. And so I was doing so much Googling that it started sending me ads for like our house <laughs> and other stores that I had found in Boulder. That's um, funny. Places that I've never been and restaurants and everything. And my husband got the big idea. He's like, hey. I'm going to see what we can do with like this algorithm. So he started like typing in divorce lawyers and type, typing in like apartments, you know, and he started getting, we both started getting ads, but I was getting furniture stores and stuff for schools and he was getting, you know, dating sites. So it was That's really so interesting to see what the Google algorithm did. Obviously we're still together, um, yes. but it was really fun. <laughs> it was really fun to see like, okay, it thinks I'm doing this. What's it going to give me? It thinks you're doing this. Hey, here's all these ads um and i think we confused google quite a bit but it was it oh, was that's a good hilarious it, that's it really funny. was it seems to be uh it seems to be very driven to get you to spend money on stuff that you're thinking about yes so. absolutely yeah how many advertisements do you get for everything to do with writing and promoting oh, and tons, probably, yeah tons. non-stop yes like every other you know, whatever. I, I try not to, I try not to spend too much time on there. It makes my, my brain hurt. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that on Facebook that makes my brain hurt, but yeah, you know, I get a lot I of limit. teacher sites. So I get a lot of really cool teacher memes, so I can't help myself. So now tell me what I didn't ask you is, are you um, self-published or traditionally published? Self-published. Um, you know, I've, I've sent it out. I've sent the manuscript out before it got fully edited. Obviously it didn't do quite as well as I would hope. Um, but you know, I just, I don't have time to pursue an agent. That seems to be one of the things that's the hardest to do is to get an agent. Um, and I'm like, I want to publish this book, you know, before I die, it would be nice. Um, you know, so I wanted to get it out there. I wanted to have people read it. It's been getting good reception from the people who, who have seen it. So, I mean, that's, that's positive. Um, and they're not all my friends. It's other people that I don't know too. So it's like, okay, so we're getting some positive feedback on that. Nice. Um, you know, so it's just I decided I would go that route and kind of test the waters, see what people thought of my writing. Um, the one that I'm going to try to do all the uh, for the traditional is going to be Forever Demand, uh, just because it's a very unique story and I think it might do well. But Sophia and I also had a conversation about cover art. Now she designed the cover art for Forever Demand, so that art that's on the website is actually one of her paintings the one that oh, has very the cool. bird creature and the two people in the foreground that's one of her paintings very, um, and very she, cool she was saying she was talking to you and it was about you know cover art and they're going to decide the cover art and i'm like no no this cover art is specific to this book it needs to be on this book um you know so it depends on if i can you know get somebody to actually listen to me on that or not will depend on you know the route i go um, yeah. The artist for the for the for the current book is actually a former student of mine, um, and she's gone on to be a graphic designer. So I've been working with her um, for the designs for the other books as well. And she, uh, I think, have, the cover for the book is stunning. You have got some great uh, great resources there at your fingertips. You are very very lucky. That is awesome. Um, yeah. She did a yeah, great job. I, it it all matches the end cover, matches the front, and then the back. It's all in the design. So. 
Perfect. Yeah, you know, we're in such a different age with the whole self-publishing versus traditional publishing. You know, there was there was a time where, you know, you would like kind of when you would say self-publish, you would kind of like hide your, your face mm. and say it because, you know, they made you feel like it was, uh, you know, uh, something bad or something not good enough. And and that is not the case anymore. Not not by a long shot. So many mm. and, and we're talking like big name authors now are leaving these large you know, companies. Companies and and I have nothing against traditional publishing. I, I've been there, done that. I, for me, I don't love it. Um, I'm not saying I would never try for that again. Right. I, you know, talking about the cover art, that was my experience. I I had a rough experience. I did not get the covers that I wanted for my books, and you're stuck with that for a while. And that was a big deal to me. And I I knew I knew after that experience that I, I was not going to be relinquishing any control over my work mm -hmm. again. So, and now we have, you know, as you well know, and as we've talked about, all the resources are here for us. You know, oh, yeah. it's not just the publishing companies that can access editors and cover designers and all of the things that you need uh, to publish a high quality book are at, at our fingertips now. So there's really, um, and again, I, you know, I'm not trying to put traditional publishers out of business by any means, no. but you know if you have the resources and the tools and the skills and the ability and to to do it yourself you know i always i i have to admit i always encourage people to do it i say go for it for sure so right. i i love hearing self-published authors stories for sure yeah i mean I, i'll see where it goes um one of the annoying things is i have a well now ex-friend because this turned into a huge fight but he actually accused me of um, not wanting to go with traditional publishing because I was afraid. I said, it has nothing to do with being afraid. It has absolutely nothing to do with being afraid. It has everything to do with, this is the way I want the story to go. This is the way I want to have it happen. This is the way the story, you know, it needs to be uh, going. Um, and he just, he and I had a huge falling out and that's okay. I'm absolutely fine mm -hmm. with that. It's, it's yeah, it's long, it's unfortunate. Know. And and you're right. Some people hold on to that that old uh view, that mindset that if you don't traditionally publish, you're not real. You know, you're uh, mm -hmm. you know, what is it? like the velveteen rabbit, I guess, if you're, if you're not yeah. loved by a traditional author, you, a uh, traditional publisher, then you must not be real. Um, it, it's just not the case. It's, it's an outdated uh, mode of thinking. And, and I certainly, you know, if that, if somebody's mindset is, I will only consider myself a real author. If I'm, if I'm traditionally published, I say, go for it, go through the steps, do the things that you need to do and, uh, you know, hold out and wait. But, um, I was of the same mindset that you were that I want this now. I'm, I'm, I don't know about you. I'm an extremely impatient person yep. when I want something, I want it 10 <laughs> minutes ago. Yep. And, uh, you know, and for me, I was completely fine with everything. If, if something is wrong or not perfect or not good, it's all on me and I'm okay with that. You know, I'll take the mm -hmm. responsibility. I'll take the hit for it. And, uh, yep. and I have, certainly in in some of my uh work you know there's always something and um but at least i know it's fine. a few things we missed a comma or we missed a period or we had mm -hmm. two periods or there was you know there's always little things and i think in any manuscript no matter how good you edit something i think there's always going to be a problem or two that people catch and as soon as they mentioned it i went in and fixed the manuscript so that the next round would be fine and you know it's just it's in good shape now, I think, but you know, mm -hmm. it's it's a learning process, you know. Oh, I better Absolutely. look for those double periods or look right. for those two spaces or yeah. You know, and that's doesn't... actually, you know, a funny benefit uh, also of self-publishing, if you ask me. When somebody does catch something, you can fix it in like five minutes and right. it's fixed exactly. for the next, you know. Whereas, you know, I'm and I I know this sounds rotten to be so happy about this, but I, I have to call it what it is. I, I was reading a Stephen King book, I don't remember which one it was, and I found a, a mistake. I found, mm -hmm. you know, a, a true blue grammatical error that, you know, it was Stephen freaking King. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that brought me a little bit of wicked joy that, you know, probably uh, karma will will get me for feeling joy over somebody else's, uh, you know, mistake in their work. But but it's it was nice reassuring that they can make mistakes, too, that even yes. you know the, the big name authors. And I love Stephen King's work, too. You know, I certainly have nothing bad to say about it. Nothing. Um, I know he has a hate 
hate affair with adverbs. So that's yes. a, that's another thing that I've run up against. You know, so we're limiting adverbs, but not completely excising them. Um, from right. They are, but, um, you know, it's like, I know that that's one of his, you know, deadly sins is the adverbs. It's like, okay, yes. well, you know, sometimes you need one. Sometimes they're important. Yeah, absolutely. Did you, uh, did you, just out of curiosity, did you read or uh, read his on writing, Stephen King yes. on writing? Oh. Yep, that was in one of my college classes too. And I absolutely love it. And I love the story 1408. So it absolutely is, you know, and that's, he kind of deconstructs his writing of that, of that short story in the, uh, in the, in the, in the novel of on writing. And uh, just, you know, love being able to see like how he put that together and, you know, it's such a difference from the movie with, with John Cusack, but it's really well done. You know, it's a great yeah, Absolutely. Film. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it's a great book. It's, I actually always recommend it to people. What, yeah. um, speaking of that, do you have a, a book that you recommend to uh, students or aspiring authors to, to help them hone their craft? So the funny thing is, <laughs> I actually, when I, when I talk to students about um, writing and, you know, watching commas and watching punctuation and dialogue punctuation and everything, I actually send them to Stephen King. I actually say, go look at one of his novels and look at the punct because this is how I finally figured out commas because commas were like a huge thing. Like the reading parties that we did that I mentioned earlier, there was one night that my friends had a mystery theme. I walked into this one and they had cashews on the table and there were crescent rolls and we had pork chops and there were all these comma shaped items and they're like we are going to break you of your comma problems and they used to joke that i'd use them all up in the beginning of the chapter and there'd be nothing left at the end of each chapter in the way of commas so after that i'm like i have been embarrassed into commodum i am going to figure this out and i actually went and looked at stephen king i think i was reading um I, don't know, I was looking at the stand or it one of the big ones and i literally started looking how is this dialogue punctuated where do the commas go how does this work how do these things and i literally studied stephen king um, and his writing style because he was an english teacher he absolutely was perfected i was not an english teacher at the time i started in my 30s so when i was going through and working on the novel i was literally just sitting there okay we're going to figure this punctuation out i am going to teach myself using stephen king who is really good with grammar and use him as my model so actually you know when i do talk about it i'm like go find a novel that is a good novel that's been published because there are bad novels out there that have been published. Sure. Um, and I said, go look at those and look at the punctuation. Don't go to Faulkner, he doesn't like punctuation, you know, but go to somebody else who actually uses punctuation, not that Faulkner's bad, but, um, you know, find somebody who uses punctuation correctly, use them, look at them, study them. You know, and I do teach commas when I when I teach my English classes too. And I specifically you're over the the comma anxiety. <laughs> oh, no more comma anxiety. No, no more. more. It's gone. No more. Right. You have oh. mastered the comma. So yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. I love it. Um, what what advice would you give to an aspiring author right now? Somebody who wants to do what we're doing. Uh, don't quit. You know, and actually I told this to somebody on one of the writing groups. They're like, I put this writing away and I didn't do it for a while. And I'm like, look, I put this, started putting this together in my teens. I wrote it out fully in my late twenties, typed it in my thirties, sat on it for a decade. And then finally it's out, you know, I'm 52 years old. I'm like, I'm going to deal with this now because now is the time that I have that it needs to come out. Um, you know, don't give up, do not give up on it. You know, one of my favorite authors, Sterling Lanier wrote Hero's Journey, or High Arrow's Journey and Unforsaken High Arrow. I think he has, he passed away not long ago or, you know, not long after he finished those two books. And he was in his seventies, I believe, when he published those and they're brilliantly written books. Um, you know, it's like, you're never too late to get into writing. You're never too late to, to do, you know, this, this passion project um that we have i think so don't quit don't quit oh, that's going. beautiful Keep advice learning. yeah yeah absolutely and i agree with you completely i you know so many people i've talked to um throughout my my writing and publishing journey uh, i've heard so many times and i'm sure you've heard it too the you know i've always wanted to write a book or i have a great idea for a book mm -hmm. but and there's always 
but, and mm -hmm. I always stop them and I say, but nothing, sit down and write, just yep. sit down and write and don't stop until it's done. And you'll know when it's done, just, just do it. If this is truly something that you have wanted to do, and, and it's always broken my heart when I hear people say that, you know, people who I know, you know, there's of course people who are like, oh yeah, I've always wanted to do that. That's, that's not the people we're talking about. We're talking about right, the people right. where, you, where you see that look in that, in their they have eyes that passion. and they have yes. That passion. Yeah. yes and it's just you know and it's always that you know they can come up with a thousand reasons i'm too busy i don't know where to start blah blah blah. they come up but it all boils down to one thing and i think it's always fear you know fear of of um it not being good fear of people judging them and uh to that i always say listen people are going to judge you no matter what no matter what you do someone is going to be judging you on it so why not be doing something that you love? Right. You know, it's as, it, to me, it's as simple as that. And I and I and I know, in fairness, it's not really that simple. People aren't as cold hearted as I am, <laughs> and indifferent to uh, you know criticism. You know, people can mm -hmm. say whatever they want. I'm like, Psh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's so. not the normal response. But uh, but uh, yeah, I agree with you. Don't quit and uh, and don't be afraid or don't let the fear dominate. I mean, we're all afraid certainly, and I, I think that's okay. But don't let the fear you know, stop you. Right. Right. So, um, so, so tell me now I'm, I'm changing gears again. When's, the, when's the projected release date for the next? So probably end of February, early March, again, just kind of depending on how things come together. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're pretty excited about that. This one, this one's very different than the first one. And the fact that it's still the journey that they're going on, they do find the dragon, they do find the things that they need to, to acquire. Um, but we shift from, you know, fantasy into crossing a desert, going into a jungle, uh, and just the different peoples that they run into there and the different cultures that they, that they uh, encounter. And that's been interesting too. Um, Sophia has a strong back in, background in archeology. span uh, and anthropology. So this has been, you know, an interesting discussion uh, going on, going on with hers. You nice. Know, she's kind of guided me through some of the pitfalls. She's like, you can't save this. I'm like, okay. All right. So <laughs> we fixed it. We fixed it. Okay. We've got that. Oh, that's great. I have, I have a feeling this book is going to be pretty flawless. No, no pressure or anything, but no, it, never, it never like... any pressure. <laughs> no, no, you know. <laughs> oh, I love it. Tell everybody again, the name of the series. So it's the Kirolithian Chronicles. I know, say Beautiful. that 10 times fast. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I thought I was going to be really brave and, and say it first. And then I was like, <laughs> I'm not that brave, <laughs> but it's, I, you it's know, still, I love, yeah, it, it's, you know, you, you can break it down and it's key and Ral and then Isthmus is really what it is. And just kind of, it breaks down. I do. I do want to give a little humble brag that after I heard you say, it, I was like, I was going to say it right. I would have said it right. I, you know, I know nobody is going to believe me now because, you know, sure you're going to say it right, but I'm just saying, I definitely was right. <laughs> no, I, I love it. And, and actually I love the spelling. I love the way it looks. Is that a weird thing to say? I love the way no, the word no. looks. Yeah. It, it's, it's very cool. How did you come up with that? Um, I, you know, I'll be honest with you. I don't remember. It was so long ago. I think it was just like, oh, isthmus is a really cool word. What can I play around with this? And, you know, you're a writer. You understand that sometimes just words appear uh, and it just kind of, it just kind of happens when you're least expecting it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I totally get that. That is so true. Um, and one last thing before I finally set you free, you poor woman, oh, no, I've been it's, trapping it's, you here. You're okay. No, okay. I'm fine. <laughs> um, tell everybody where they can find you. What's your website and uh, Facebook, anything you want to want them to find you on your social media, all of it. Okay. Um, so the Facebook, you know, we'll start with the website. The website is uh, DebraJarvis.com. I can say that. I can say my own name. So it's <laughs> DebraJarvis.com. Um, the link to the, the Amazon link is on there. So you can actually find it through there. There's some synopsis of the, the, uh, the Ivory Queen and the Ebon King. Um, you know, Forever Demand is also talked about on there. So we'll be able to kind of give you an idea of what that is. Um, you know, social media, there is the Kirolithian Chronicles Facebook page, 
and I just started a new one that's a reader's page, and it's the uh, the fantasy worlds of of Deborah Jarvis. So, you know, and I always say this, and I'm like, I feel really egotistical mentioning my own things because I'm not, you know, I'm fairly humble. Um, you know, and it's not one of those things that I like to talk about myself. I actually had that conversation with my students. It's like I hate talking about myself. Um, you know, because they're it. writing their college essay and they have to write about themselves. I'm like, no, I feel you on this. Yeah. But um, so that's where it is. It's uh, for Twitter. It's uh, the rail coyote. The rail coyote. So that's what it is. R A E L cool. coyote. Okay. Um, and there is a TikTok, but it doesn't exist just yet. There's one thing on there where I did a, a, a promo for something else. But my daughter Rose swears she's going to help me figure out what I'm doing, and we'll have some very we'll have cool. some interesting things for for TikTok too. So. I love TikTok. I have a blast over on TikTok. I actually am going to be talking to somebody, uh, a group pretty soon about um, going using TikTok as an author and uh, the benefits of it and the joys mm -hmm. of it and, and the downfalls of it. There are downfalls to it, certainly. And, and surprise, surprise, the downfall of TikTok is the people on TikTok. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> front, no, it's not. Having seen some of the challenges that they had for the kids to do to teachers and the school, we yeah. had, you know, there was sep September was vandalized something. So people were like throwing things or pulling things off the walls of the school. And then supposedly October was going to be squat a teacher in the behind. Thankfully, oh. yeah, we, we stopped that. Um, you know, so yeah. there were a number of a number of things So TikTok TikTok definitely has its challenges. Yes, it does. It does. Yeah, you just, uh, I, you know, I always tell everybody just um, if if you don't have a thick skin, then 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 don't do it, or at the very least, turn mm -hmm. off your comments section, and then you don't have to deal with it at all. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's I, I have a blast with it. I love it, and I always recommend it to people, just in general, you know, just just because. I find it to be fun, you know, and, and lots of people will will disagree with me and that's okay. <laughs> but very cool. I'm excited that you're on there. That'll be fun. Yeah, um, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on here and talking to me about your books and, and the fabulous craft of writing and uh, all that comes with it. And uh, I, I look forward to having you and Sophia back on the show with me. We're going to have a lot of fun. It'll be awesome. That's going to be a blast. Yeah. Yes. I can't wait. So I, told you, about it too. I told you I'm just going to have my coffee and I'm just going to sit back <laughs> and, and just say, ladies, go at it. Let us just watch this, how this goes. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's oh. going to be a, a, a lot of fun to see how that flows together. Absolutely. We'll have a great time. Oh, Deb, thank you so much again for coming on. And we'll talk again soon, I hope. Oh, great. Definitely. <laughs> thank you. Excellent. Take care.